What's up everyone, it's your boy Rad 89 here bringing you another rad movie review. Today we're going to talk about Child's Play 2 from 1990, yes the sequel to Child's Play. This is famously known for being a, like probably the most talked about and the most popular one I want to say because a lot of the stuff that people talk about as their favorite or the moments they recall about Child's Play films, usually it's Child's Play 2 and especially because of like some other moments that happen in that third act, very iconic. So today you're going to hear my thoughts on this film, positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Child's Play 2 takes place two years after that first film, and this film was released in 1990, I believe in November of 1990, and this one, like I said, takes place a couple years after that first film. Andy now is in foster care because his mom got an institutionalized for backing up his story, so I think that's very tragic events. Like, I hate, I kind of, like, really dislike that part of the film, and then we never really get to go back to the mom's character, really don't hear about her that much at all after that, so it's kind of wild. But yeah, Andy ends up in foster care, ends up with some new parents who are actually watching Kyle. So this is our first introduction to the character Kyle in the franchise. So let's discuss the positives right away. One key thing is this one's written by Don Mancini. And I think this is still him with the flavor of the first film. There's still a lot of, you know, scary nature to it. It's still a much more kind of grounded story before it gets kind of really bombastic with a lot of the sequels later. And some other stuff that's really positive about this sequel is that Chucky is more unhinged. The fact that we get Brad Dourif back and we already know he's Chucky, he gets to have a lot more fun. He gets a lot more one-liners and stuff and I believe even the kills, like the kill department, they up the ante too. So those are a couple things that I love better than the first film is that, like I said, we get more Brad Dourif, it's more iconic one-liners and definitely the kill department up the ante for sure. And some of the stuff I like too is that the fact that this one shows that Chucky is very resourceful. Even though you're like, oh, he's just a doll. I could kick him, I can destroy him, burn him or whatever. Like I could handle this doll. I'm talking about the fact that he's able to track down Andy. Some of it seems like it's very convenient. A lot of the story stuff is like written for convenience. So it does get tiresome. That's kind of like a mixed aspect of the film is that like I feel that. But it also, like I said, shows that Chucky himself is a very resourceful character and a resourceful slasher. I think the score is actually a little bit better in this film in terms of the music and everything. It's more haunting, it's more terrifying, especially like the music score when he's killing the teacher with the yardstick and Andy escapes the detention room. That one's great. Like, I love that one. Like I said, the music in here is pretty top-notch for sure. And the look at Chucky. I think he looks just as good as he does in the first film. He's terrifying. And he also looks like, you know, cute and inviting when he's just trying to be like a doll. But those scenes when he gets to go off and he's killing people, he gets to go off. Now let's get into the mixed-in negatives because this is one that I do, I tussle with it. Every time I return to it, it's one that like I think I like more when I think about it in my head, but then when I actually watch the film, there's stuff that actually bothers me about it. One thing in particular is the foster parents, I believe it's Joanne, and I forgot the, the man's name, I forget the, the uh, stepfather's name, but yeah, the foster parents, like I just can't get down with them. And I like that actress too, So she's from American Werewolf in London, I enjoy her as an actress, but just in this film, I don't enjoy like that foster storyline thing. It's just, it's okay. I like the fact that it introduces us to Kyle and Andy and Kyle's relationship gets built up. You get to see them get really close and that carries on to the Chucky TV series that we've been getting now. So I love that aspect of this film. That's probably another positive. One of my favorite parts is that they build their relationship in this movie. But I just, yeah, I just don't like the foster parents. A lot of the moments with them I don't enjoy. It's just typical like oh we don't believe the kid he went through these traumatic events and like all these things and you know leaving Chucky down in the basement and trying to show him like look he's still down there he's still down there Andy and like you know ugh, it's just all those moments I don't have fun with those moments I do have fun with the third act that's another positive we'll say is like when well, once we get to the third act the third act is money. I think the toy store, the factory, like that whole sequence for the last 12 minutes of the film, I think is fantastic. But a lot of the, the journey to get to that third act, I don't really have fun with. 
And I was saying that the kill department, we upped the ante, but I hate the fact that we actually don't get to see Joanne die. Like, Kyle just runs into her, like, you know what I mean? And we get to see the aftermath. So, it's like I said, it's a bag of mixed for me with Child's Play 2. This is always one that, when I recall it in my mind, and I think about it, I enjoy it more thinking about it. But when I actually watch it, I have problems with this one. Like, there's things that I dislike, like I said, in terms of the pacing, in terms of some of the characters, but I love the third act. I like Chucky and the one-liners, and like I said, some of the kills are pretty legit. That building of Andy and Kyle's relationship, I love that too. So there's stuff to enjoy about this film. I don't hate this one. It's just, like I said, for me, this is probably like middle of the road Chucky for me because there's other films that I just have so much more fun with when I return to them. For instance, like I said, with the first one, we just discussed the first one. Speaking of, I'll have a link for that in the description so you can go check out my review for Child's Play, the first film, if you happen to miss that one. I really do like that one because they build an atmosphere. They have this creepy nature to it. It's the scariest one. And just Tom Holland's direction, I think you could really feel it. Tom Holland is a good director, and you can feel the direction and the path he's going with in that first film. And this second film, yeah, it's just a little bit more unhinged. It's very similar to that first film, but it's just more unhinged, more crazy, you know what I mean? And they try to go with this brisk, fast pace, but it does slow down in the middle for me a little bit, and that's where it kind of hurts the movie. So for me, in my book, Child's Play 2, as for a rating, is going to get a... 8 out of 10. This is still a very solid, like, respectable rating. Like I said, this is still a film I enjoy. It's just not one of my favorite films in the Child's Play franchise. I do like this one, and I think it's a decent slasher and definitely a worthy sequel to that first film. And, like, after these first two, you can see why they wanted to keep going because this is a very marketable character, you know what I mean? Selling the good guy dolls, all the different versions of Chucky you could create and all that stuff, plus the little weapons and all that that you can design to go with him. So yes, this was a franchise that you knew was going to keep going right after this uh, sequel. And nine months later, we ended, we ended up getting Child's Play 3, but that one's kind of crazy because we got some production stuff, behind the scenes stuff to discuss about that one. So I'm very excited to get to Child's Play 3. But these are just my thoughts, my opinions on Child's Play 2. That means down below, share your thoughts. Is this one of your favorites in the franchise? Have you, have you not seen this one? Or like, are you thinking about checking out the Child's Play franchise? Definitely let me know down in the comments so we can discuss and be sure also to like, subscribe, have that notification bell poke because all that stuff helps out the channel. But most importantly, you know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.